yes, it's Carrie. Um, so, you get a bonus video today. <laughs> I've been tossing around an idea about possibly doing a Doctor Who video. I wanted to talk about this latest season. If you guys haven't seen the first episode of Series 8, I believe, at least on BBC America, it is airing before the next episode tomorrow night. So, go check that out. It's like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes long, um, which explains why they released it in the movie theaters all over the world, because I don't think doing an hour long episode justifies movie theater, but, you know, whatever. After you remove uh, commercials, it's like an hour and a half, so that's, that's like a kid's movie. So anyway first episode was called Deep Breath. I'm going to try not to get too spoilery, um, but I apologize in advance if I let anything slip. As any Whovian would know, there has been a new doctor. <laughs> Matt Smith regenerated at Christmas and Peter Capaldi is now the 12th doctor. Um, I will give away what happens in the Christmas episode because in case you just to give some uh, background information. The Time Lords are were trying to get in to this to this universe from the crack in the wall, the famous crack in the wall that began in series five. So and so not all of the cracks went away when the Doctor rebooted the universe. So the doc the Time Lords have been trying to get through. And they found a weak spot in this town called Christmas and long story short there was a threat of war breaking out if they were able to come through and by assorted means they were able to grant the doctor a whole new set of regenerations beyond the 12 that were originally allowed so, according to Stephen Moffat, there will be consequences of this action. Uh, the Doctor is going to be a little different. And you can already tell that first off. Um, aside from the fact that regeneration episodes are pretty hectic anyway, because the Doctor is kind of getting used to his new self. Um, so he's kind of you know, recovering, I guess you could say. Going back to when David Tennant began, he's trying to figure out what kind of man he is. So, we figured out... So, in the first episode, we kind of figured that this new doctor is ornery, to say the least. He's got a Scottish accent, which um, David Tennant was Scottish, and I, or it, David Tennant is Scottish, but he kept an English accent, and I believe Sylvester McCoy is also Scottish, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the classic series that much, but I believe he was too, and I'm not sure if he kept his accent or not, but going into it, Peter Capaldi said that he is keeping his Scottish accent. So there's a comment made about his accent and he goes, ooh, I'm Scottish, I can complain about things. So I think that's going to be kind of funny. Uh, uh, Clara is having some issues with his regeneration. Um, she doesn't like the fact that he's older, which I liked what Chris Hardwick said in the after episode um, later that evening uh, that her reaction kind of reflects the fans because there are a lot of fans that don't like the fact that this doctor is older. In fact, I believe that he is the oldest actor-wise of all of them, even may, I mean, just a smidge older than William Hartnell. But William Hartnell actually looked older, so he was able to pull off the grumpy old man. So she's having some issues with his regeneration. And 
and having a hard time accepting it. And Vastra and Jenny and Strax try to help her out. There's a dinosaur rampaging, well, there's a dinosaur in the middle of London. And a murder mystery to be solved. And, um, and it involves aliens. <laughs> I'm trying to be very vague so I don't give spoilers away. Um, and one thing that the doctor keeps saying, to give you guys a hint, is the aliens seem familiar. He can't figure out why. And his whole face seems familiar. And he can't figure out why. Because he looks... Because if you remember back in David Tennant's final season, Fires of Pompeii, that was Peter Capaldi, was the father of that family. So I don't know if maybe part of him recognizes that face from that incident. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be going back to that story to figure out where he got his face. Um, but overall, I kind of liked the episode. I really, I, I liked the story. I liked the little scene at the end, even though it made me cry. <sighs> oh, the feels. Oh, the feels. You guys know what I mean. Leave a comment about it. Um, <laughs> let me know what you thought about that. Um, I liked the Paternoster gang being in there. I think they deserve their own spin-off. They are so fun. Uh, Strax is just a bonehead. The potato. He is a potato. He has the intelligence of a potato. And then there's Jenny and Bastra. And I like their interactions with between each other and the other characters. Um... I think they deserve a spin-off. I thought there was talk about a possible one, and it would be more along the lines of, like, a Sarah Jane kind of spin-off, like, more kid-friendly. Uh, I bet Jenny and Vastra could get into a more grown-up series, but because of Strax, that's, he keeps it light and fun and funny. So, um, I thought there was talk about a, uh, spinoff, but hasn't gone through yet. So, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I don't know about anyone else. I like them. Uh, and I'm reserving judgment on this Doctor until I get a little more into the series. Uh... Because, like I said, he was still trying to figure himself out. And... Definitely a little darker. Um... Not as many light moments. But there are a few. He makes, he makes some snarky comments. Um... I will give this one away. There's a, a scene where they're they're trapped and Clara is trying to grab his sonic screwdriver with his with her foot and because of his accent I had to watch it a couple times to catch what he said but on the third time I finally caught that she's she's trying to reach out with her foot you know she's so tiny and he goes at times like this I miss Amy <laughs> and she goes what nothing <laughs> So that was that was pretty funny. Um, his whole interaction with the dinosaur is fun. Um, so I think I think there will still be some light moments, which is good for the show. I think, from a viewer standpoint, anyway, because um, it can't be all serious all the time. Because that's no fun. Uh, it, you gotta have some some light moments and some some moments that make you smile and 
even some feels that make you cry, but you're happy in the end. At least I was. Um, so, if you haven't, like I said, if you haven't caught it yet, at least on BBC America, I know that the first episode will be airing before the second. And I have every intention of watching that tomorrow. Maybe not the first one again, unless boyfriend wants to watch it again. But, um, definitely the second one. I will be planning off of work by then. So, uh, we'll be able to watch it. And I'll be able to watch it with somebody instead of watching it alone. Because that's no nobody in my house is a Whovian. So I have to either go over his place or go an hour and a half west to my friend who... <laughs> We'll probably download it on iTunes or something. So that's my review of Deep Breath. And after I get through this hectic weekend, I will maybe have a review up of Inside the Inside the Dalek or Into the Dalek. One of those. One of those titles. Um and from what I saw in one of the clips that they released, it's the premiere of Danny Pink, who is a new character to the show. He is a math teacher at the school that Clara teaches at. So maybe that will be a love interest? I don't know. He's kind of cute. So we'll see. <laughs> um, so that's it for me. I gotta get some stuff done. So... I'm going to post this video and the video prior, and have a good day everybody!